When starting out with current RMS, you may have hundreds of products and assets to get into the system. Adding these items one by one can be insightful for understanding the necessary information and fields. But when inputting large quantities, it's much quicker and more efficient to use a spreadsheet to bulk upload this information. In this video, we will guide you through the process of creating and importing your products and stock levels into the system. To import your stock, you'll need two spreadsheets. The first is the product import spreadsheet. You can access these spreadsheets by visiting our help guides. Please see the link in the description of this video. Alternatively, you can contact a member of our team via the green help bubble and ask for the import files. Once you have these spreadsheets to hand, we can start importing our data. The first column we need to fill out here is the product name. So I'm going to use an example as of today as a MacBook. I'm also going to add a MacBook power cable in here as well. The next column we have is the product group. This is where we can assign the individual product to its overarching groups. For example, today, I'm going to use computers and I'm going to use cables. Next, we have our allowed stock type. This is where we can specify if the item is a rental item, a sale item, or maybe it's both a rental and a sale item. For today's example, I'm going to say that I rent both of these items. Next, we have our stock method. This is where we can choose from either bulk stock for our lower value items, things like cables, or serialized stock for our higher value items, things like speakers, where we may want an individual asset number or barcode on each stock item. I do want to mention, if you're from the UK or Australia, this will be serialized with an S instead of like a Z on this video here. For bulk stock items, we then have the ability to include our rental bulk location. So this may be where the item is stored within your warehouse. For example, I'm gonna say these are stored on shelf A. We then have the rental bulk quantity. This is how many of these items we actually own. So I'm gonna say I've got 10 of these cables just here. If we have got a serialized item, there is a second spreadsheet that we can use to get our information and asset numbers into the system. I do also want to mention here that columns A to D are mandatory. You can delete the other columns should you need to. But just to cover them for today, we do have the rental rate definition. You can use the system defaults like daily rate, or you can add any of the custom rates you may have already created in your system. For today, I'm just going to create these daily rates. Next, we have the rental price. This is how much we are going to be charging for this item. Please note here, I'm not adding any currency symbols. The system will automatically add these for me when we upload this document to the system. Next, we have our tags. These are your subcategories, such as maybe make and model of the item. Today, I'm going to use laptop and I'm going to use Apple just in here. Next, we have the replacement charge. This is where we can enter the cost to replace the item if it is damaged. Next, we can specify the item's weight the system will automatically add the units here for us, just like the units against the price. Finally, we have the image URL. This is where we can head over to Google, right click an image we wish to be imported into our system, and we can head down to copy image address. 
Once we've got our image address, we can head back into our spreadsheet and we can input that image address in the image URL column. I'm just going to do the same now for one of my power cables. Once we're happy with this spreadsheet, we can go ahead and save it. At this point, I do want to mention that it must be saved as a CSV file for the importation process to work. After completing the product import spreadsheet, we can head back over to our system, head over to the top right, go down to system setup, scroll all the way down, to import data. We can then select the type of data we wish to upload. In this instance, it is our product level. We can then go ahead and choose our file. This is where we're gonna find the file and import spreadsheet we've just filled out. Once found, we can go ahead and click upload. And we can see that our upload was successful. We've uploaded two new products to our system. At this stage, you may receive an error if something has gone wrong with the import process. If so, you can please head over to your email. You will have received an email with the error log and the rows that error correlate to. If you have any issues understanding this error log, please contact our support team for further clarification. As you can see, if I head over to my resources and my products page, we can see I now have a new MacBook and a MacBook power cable in my system. Once we have created our products, the next step requires our second spreadsheet, the stock level import file. In this spreadsheet, we can specify the quantity of serialized items we have. For example, I can add five MacBooks we need to ensure this name matches exactly with the name given in our product import spreadsheet. The best way to do this is to head back into our product import file, copy the name that we gave, head back into our setup stock and input the name just in there. From here, I can drag this down and add as many stock items as I want. For this example, I'm going to add five. Next, we can specify the store where each item is located. If you haven't set up your stores yet, this will automatically be called default. In the stock type column, we can indicate whether each item is a sale item or a rental item. In this case, all of mine are going to be rental. The asset number column is where we can assign a unique number to each stock item. This number will be used to scan the item in and out for future jobs. These are the only mandatory columns, but we can also add optional columns such as the serial number. This can be used if you want to store a manufacturer's number alongside the main barcode. Next, we can specify the location where this item will be stored. This can be in your warehouse. For example, maybe I'm going to say MacBook One is stored on shelf A. In the opening balance column, we can enter the quantity for each item. For example, I'm going to add one just in here. Once this spreadsheet is complete, we can save it as a CSV file, then head back to our system, head over to the top right, scroll down to system setup, head all the way down, to import data, select the type of data we wish to import, 
at this present time, it is the stock level. From here, we can go ahead and find the file. We can then click upload. And we can see that we have had five successful created stock items. I can head back over to my resources, my product green, head into my MacBook. I can now see that I have five of these available ready to go out. If I scroll down, I'll also be able to see underneath my stock levels, the five MacBooks we added, the serial number information and the location.